So we are currently living in days in which revival is being hailed in certain theological quarters. The question is, what does revival in the Bible look like? I think it must always be a call for a return to truth. And there's very little questioning in the current revivals about the nature of Christianity. I don't want to be critical unfairly, but I must ask this question. What is the gospel according to Jesus? Is it simply, well, Jesus died for your sins and you're going to be forgiven so you can go to heaven? I think that's just false. So revival, I would expect, would be led by a tremendous upsurge of questioning tradition. And that is that Jesus was not so much against the agnostics and the atheists. For example, he's reported as saying, multitudes of people will say in that future judgment, Lord, look what we did. We preached your name. We preached your gospel. We did all sorts of wonderful things in your name, only to be greeted with the chilling words, get out of here, I never recognized you. I find that very challenging. So I suggest that revival ought to be, are we defining the gospel correctly? The gospel, according to the popular system, is that Jesus came to do three days' work. I want you to ask yourself, is that true? What was Jesus doing for practically half of his ministry before he even mentioned his death? So the gospel does not begin with the death of Jesus, the death of Jesus and his resurrection, of course, is most important. But didn't Jesus rather begin his ministry in Mark chapter 1 by saying, the kingdom of God is coming. Repent and stop not believing in the kingdom of God. So that immediately focuses our attention on the kingdom of God. And so revival, I would expect, would occur when people say, my goodness, we might have been teaching things wrong. So just getting emotional about what we believe wrongly isn't going to do us any good. What we must do is repent and get the truth because a love of the truth is necessary if you want to be saved, according to 2 Thessalonians 2.10. You must have a passion for the truth, not just an emotional experience. So beware then of emotional experiences which are not accompanied by a better understanding of the truth of Jesus' teaching. Let me give you one quotation from F.C. Grant in a book called The Gospel of the Kingdom. Did you get this impression from the current revival? F.C. Grant says this, It may be said that the teaching of Jesus concerning the kingdom of God represents his whole teaching. The kingdom of God is the main determinative subject of all of Jesus' discourse. Jesus' ethics were ethics of the kingdom. His theology was theology of the kingdom. His teaching regarding himself cannot be understood apart from his interpretation of the kingdom of God. And it may not only be said that all of Jesus' teaching had relation to the kingdom, also his action, everything he did from the days of his baptism, all the events of his life, till the final culminating event, the crucifixion, all of this had reference to the coming of the kingdom in the future. Announcing the kingdom's approach, so it was still something looked forward to in the future, and of calling men and women to prepare for entering the kingdom in the future upon the conditions which by divine authority he announced. That, I think, is an unarguable statement about what Jesus always preached about. I didn't hear any mention of the kingdom of God gospel from any of the comments I listened to from the so-called revival. So, revival without a return to truth, revival without a repentance of our careless error, our careless misunderstandings of Jesus is not really, I think, a genuine revival. Not difficult to create an emotional atmosphere in any combined activity. A football match is filled with emotion, tremendous excitement from my side against your side and so on. So just having somebody become emotional about his Christianity doesn't in itself prove that any kind of revival is happening. What we need to hear is a deepened understanding of Scripture, a repentance of the errors which we have carelessly accepted, particularly in defining the gospel. I remind you of the marvelous verse in Matthew 13, verse 52. Jesus here said, every religious teacher who becomes a disciple of the kingdom 
That is Jesus' definition of a Christian, Some who, someone who studies the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, exactly the same thing. And such people, Jesus said, are like a house owner who brings out of his storehouse his treasury of information, things old and new. But the point is that a Christian is defined by Jesus as one who is a disciple, a learner, a student of the kingdom of God. Unless that kingdom of God is defined clearly as mainly the event of the future connected with the second coming, then we are not having a genuine revival in truth. And that's what we must expect if a revival of truth is implied by the word revival, then it must be.